All right, let's start working on this differential equation. x squared y double prime plus xy prime plus, in parentheses, uh, 9x squared minus 4 times y equals 0. Now, all differential equations that have this very particular looking form were worked out by this guy right here, Bessel. So, all equations that have this form, we call them Bessel functions. So, to get started, let's compare our differential equation to the Bessel function formula equation. And we can see that all terms resemble each other pretty well, except this one right here. In the parentheses, we have a 9x squared, where in the formula we simply have a 1x squared. So, we're going to have to fix this. Let's tweak our differential equation to more closely resemble the formula right here. And that will allow us to use the solutions that Bessel worked out. So, to get that, uh, get started with that, uh, let's see, 9x squared, I'm going to rewrite it as 3x in parentheses on the square, and this will allow me to call 3x simply as z. That is what I'm going to plug back into our equation. The 9x squared. I'm going to simply write back as z squared. And here on the left hand side of the page, I'm just going to keep track of all the things that we already talked about so we can uh, reference it a lot easier. Now, we're going to be uh, replacing all the x's in our differential equations and rewriting it into a differential equation that has only z's in it. Okay? The y we don't change. y stays y. But the x's will be replaced with something that uh, is equivalent in z. This and this x is obvious, but we must not forget that the y double prime and the y prime also has an x hiding in it. Okay? This is dy over dx, dy over dx, second derivative, first derivative. And those ones will have to be replaced as well. We're going to need something a dy over dz here. No more x. Okay, so let's get started. Uh, for the first step, I'm simply going to take the little equation that we defined right here, z equals 3x, and I'm going to solve it for x because we're going to have to plug that in here and right here. Next target, dy over dx, and then dy over dx, second derivative. Okay, first this, dy dx. Let's see, we're going to take the equation that we defined, z equals 3x, and I'm going to take its first derivative right here. z, first derivative with respect to x, will be 3x becomes simply 3. Okay, next, to get dy dx, I'm going to use the chain rule for derivatives, and I'm going to rewrite it. dy dx is the same thing as dy over dz times dz over dx. And this will simply allow me to replace dz over dx with what I found right here. It's simply 3. Therefore, we get to a point where we see that dy dx, the term that we're trying to replace, we can replace it with 3 times dy dz, and therefore no more x. Okay, very good. Now, next, uh, let's put all this aside, and right here, let's uh, work on our next target, the second derivative. Second derivative of y with respect to x, I'm just going to rewrite this a little bit. d over dx times dy dx. This is the same thing, right? Not, we didn't really change anything yet. Now, the term in the parentheses will just stay what it is. We, I put it in parentheses so we can kind of reference it. That That's not changing. Okay? I'm going to rewrite the d dx with the chain rule for derivatives, just like we did previously. And I'm going to rewrite it as d over dz times dz over dx. Now, what, uh, what, what do we know and what do we don't know? d, dz, we don't know what it is, so just leave it as is. The term in the parentheses, dy over dx, 
we know that one we found it right here so let's replace it dy dz times 3. this term dz over dx we also know we found it right here let's replace it and after cleaning up uh, we can see that uh, the term that we're trying to replace that contains x is we can replace it with 9 times the second derivative of y with respect to z let's put that aside as well and now it's time for us to plug everything back into our original equation we have the axes we have the derivatives so we can go ahead and plug them in here the x is simply z over 3 just like we defined the second derivative from here z again first derivative from right here and the z we already plugged it in there's no more change needed negative 4 is what it is and y again no change needed equals a 0 after we clean it up a little bit we can see that we arrive to a differential equation that a lot closely resembles our actual formula that we're trying to compare it to therefore we finally arrive to a proper Bessel form uh, equation every single term resembles the equation nice and closely so very good now we finally can utilize the solutions that Bessel worked out so for our first step let's work on finding the order of the equation and that would be right here v squared from the formula is the same thing as 4 in our equation so from these two we are able to find that v is 2 this is the order of the equation sometimes even call it uh, people call it the index of the equation now when Bessel worked out his solutions he found that the order of the equation determined what kind of solution you can write up when we are dealing with non-integer and integer orders you're going to have a little bit different answers so when we have a non-integer order he found that this solution is what works the c1 c2 just constant and the two j's they are uh, two functions which we call them Bessel functions of the first kind they are linearly independent and this would be the general solution for our differential equation but we are working with an order that is an integer therefore our two functions would not be linearly independent anymore so it needs to be tweaked a little bit therefore the general solution for integer order will look like this the j is still the same like it was before but the y will be a Bessel function of a second kind all right to finish up our problem remember we started the problem with x's in it right and right now our general solution has z's so let's go ahead and based on our little equation that we set up right here replace it and therefore we'll be able to write up the general solution for our differential equation which is right here the c1 and c2 is just two simple constants j the Bessel function of the first kind the y Bessel function of the second kind and both of them based on 3x all right now a lot of times in class this is just fine we found the general solution and that's the end of story but sometimes we need, would need to continue and find actual values for this problem therefore I'm going to give you a little pointers on how you would get there j the first kind of Bessel function has this formula right here you would have to plug this in expand this summation then find values for each gamma function after that Bessel function of the second kind right here has this formula right here also you need to plug it in and follow the steps and find values for it now if you don't know how that goes I have two other videos that I'm gonna link at the, in the description of this video where I take these uh, Bessel functions of the first kind I expand it 
find values for the gamma functions and show you how to go all the way. Please go ahead and uh, check those out and make sure you understand how to continue the problem if you have to. All right, uh, and that should do it for this problem. Please give a thumbs up for the video so other people can find it as well and have a great day.